Raj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada and Gurudev. So today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Maharaj. So Maharaj is enlightening us about the glories of Narhari Sarkar and Kaliya Krishnadas. So Hari Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for uh, giving your valuable association and time. So Maharaj, now I would like to hand over the call to you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Pancha Kalpa to Vishya, Kripa Sindhu, Devacha, Patitanam, Bhavane Gyo, Vaishnava Gyo, Namaha, Maom, Krishna Padaya, Krishna Pristaya, Bhutalai, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Timane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gorani Pachari, Nenir Vishesa Sunyavari, Asyatya Devi Satari, Neshi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Srivasani Gaur Bhakta Vinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Vancha Kalpa, Tarubhishya, Kripa Sindhu, Veva Chapatitanam, Bhagavad Gyo, Vaishnava Gyo, Namaha. So as that prayer goes, Manchukalpa Tarubhis Chakripa Sindhu Pehavacha Patitanam Pavane Gyo Vaishnava Gyo Namaha Namaha We offer our basenesses to all the Vaishnavas of the Lord who are like an ocean of mercy. So in our line of, of uh, Vaishnava culture we have an ocean of mercy in the form of an ocean of so many uh, superlative personalities who appeared both in Krishna Leela and in Gaur Leela to assist the Lord in his pastimes of spreading the glories of pure devotional service, the glories of chanting the holy names of the Lord, and reestablishing bhakti in the lives of the conditioned souls. <laughs> so we might say that these personalities who assist the Lord, many of them are as, are as good as the Lord, in the same in the sense that they did many many great services that were miraculous and full of compassion full of selfless uh, giving of themselves in order to reestablish uh, what is most necessary, what is that in this world. There is everything, but there is one thing missing, Krishna consciousness, which is the most important thing. As Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said, there's no lack of anything in this world except Krishna consciousness. So that is the thing that is the most needed and the thing that is most essential to bring happiness, satisfaction, peace, and ultimate perfection to the lives of the conditioned souls. These personalities who appear with the Lord perform these activities of showing compassion to the fallen souls. One such personality is Narahari Sakar. Mm -hmm. um, it mentions that he was a very intimate associate of Srimati Radharani in his previous Leela when he appeared in Vrindavan. His, her name was Madhu Mati. Uh, now he's appeared in Gaur Leela to assist Lord Chaitanya. Um, he was born in a family of Vaidyas or physicians in the village of Srikanda. Mm -hmm. uh, during the Kirtan performance of the Ratha Yantra every year, uh, devotees would come from different places to associate with the Lord in the, in the festival of Jagannath Ratha Yantra. 
And so Narahari was one of the residents of Srikanda. And as it's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, when Lord Chaitanya performed his miraculous kirtan in dancing in front of the cart of Lord Jagannath, um, he created seven kirtan groups in different places around the cart, which all had their individual kirtan leaders and individual lead dancers. Um, so Narahari was a member of the Srikanda group. I mean, uh, yeah, Srikanda. There was Kulina Gram also. And then outside of those two groups, the other five groups were uh, uh, mostly intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya from Jagannath Puri in Bengal. Navadvi. <laughs> So Narahari Sakur participated as a lead dancer in the group of uh, Sri from Sri Kanda. Mm -hmm. um, he was very dear to Lord Chaitanya, and extremely dear. He was one of the few personalities, and there were only very few, maybe a couple, who Lord Chaitanya allowed where that person to refer him to him as his Supreme Lord. Lord Chaitanya would never like being called the Supreme Lord. In fact, he would block his ears in protest. And he would always say that, that I am not the Supreme Lord. I am just simply the servant of the Supreme Lord. Or the servant, Gopi Bhattar Bhatte Kamalayor. Das, Das, no, I'm Das. Lord Chaitanya described himself in his position as Gopi Bharti, the husband of the gopis, who, who, who is, he is servant of the husband of the gopis, Das, Das, Anu Das. So this is Lord Chaitanya's given identity by himself. Of course, we know he is Srimati Radharani's mood and he is Lord Krishna. But he never would like, why didn't he like to be referred to like that? Because at that time, especially, and it still goes on today, there are personalities who develop certain spiritual uh, shaktis, powers, abilities, and then become enamored by this development and claim to be the Supreme Lord or an incarnation. And that was quite profuse at the time of Lord Chaitanya. And therefore, Lord Chaitanya wanted to destroy that by saying the living entity is not the Supreme Lord. He is simply the servant of the Supreme Lord and can never be the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is one. Although we are part and parcel of the Lord, we have the same qualities of the Lord. We never can have the quantities of those qualities. And we remain Das. We are Jivar Krishna Das. We are eternally in a position of servant, separated from the Lord, and never uh, one with the Lord. Nityo, Nityanam, Chaitanas, Chaitananam, Eko Bahudam Vidadati Kaman. This verse from the Upanishads describes that there is one Nitya, one eternal supreme person, and there are many Nitya. Nityanam refers to many. So Nitya is maintaining the Nityanams, Eko Bahudam Vidadati Kaman. No one is greater than him, and no one is equal to him. Everyone is lesser. So there's only one personality like that. Although he may manifest himself in different forms of himself, he remains one. So at that time, there were, it was fashionable for people to claim to be an incarnation of God or God himself. Well, therefore, Lord Chaitanya was very adamant 
about being called the Supreme Lord, although many persons knew it, but were very fearful of saying it because of how they knew how Lord Chaitanya felt. But Narahari Sakur was a little different. He had a very, very intimate relationship with the Lord. In fact, the Lord would very, the Lord's most confidential and most intimate personality was Gadadhar. Um, there are, there's one set of deities established by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in Sri Mayapur at the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya. They are called Gaur Gadadhar. So the Lord is worshipped not only as Gaur Nittai, but as Gaur Gadadhar. And that relationship is more on the conjugal level as opposed to Gaur Nittai or on the level of Shaka or uh, they're in the, in the mood of friendship. So um, and in that, in that uh, intimacy, he would associate with Lord Chaitanya and Gadadhar, the three of them would associate together. So this is how intimate he was with Lord Chaitanya. Um, we sing that song, um, Nara Hari Ari Kori Chamala Dulani. In the Gorarchi, every night in our temples, Nara Hari Ari Kori Chamara Dulaya. So if you actually see a picture of that Gorarchi as displayed, you'll see that there's one person fanning the Lord with a Chamar fan. That is Nara Hari Sakar. So he had that personal service of fanning the Lord during the Arti ceremony, which was performed every night at the house of Sri Vas Thakur. That would lead into the kirtans where Lord Chaitanya would dance and chant all night with his devotees. Um, these are, there's not too many pastimes. There is one pastime with, um, there are many pastimes, but there's not too many written. There's one pastime where, when Naratam Das Thakur was traveling from Jagannath Puri to go to Navadweep, he, he, he met Narahari Sakar. And upon meeting him, Naratam Das Thakur, who was very, very, very deep in bhakti, could not give up the association of Narahari. He didn't want to leave. He was so, he was so attracted in loving relationship to Narahari that he didn't want to leave at all. But Narahari explained to him that, um, you know, the devotees are waiting for you in Navadweep, so you should go. And then he instructed him to go to meet the Sringananda Brahmachari. So with great reluctance, he didn't leave. Right after that, Anarahari Sakura disappeared. It's interesting because he stayed just long enough to meet Naratam Das Thakur and to guide him in some practical instructions. So these are a few of the things that we hear. Uh, and of course, um, there's one beautiful song, which is uh, written by Srila Hari Narhari Sakar. I'll read the translation of the song. It says, if Gore came back to Nadia town, my mind would be filled with joy. I would see him, the joy of all joys, performing his kirtan pastimes. Hari, Hari, when will I again gaze upon that moonlike face? When will a day come when the dam holding the ocean of separation in my heart breaks? When will I see the golden form of the Lord wrapped in his 
Yajna Sutra. Lifting my arms into the air, I will shout Hari Hari and dance in the midst of the devotees. Saying such things, many of Gaur's devotees close their eyes and merge into love for him. When will Narahari's desire be filled? When will he gaze again upon the form of young Gora? <laughs> That's a beautiful song. That was towards, that was after Lord Chaitanya disappeared. <laughs> so Narahari disappeared in the year 1570 AD on the Krishna Chatur Dasi, which is today. So we honor this great personality. We can remember him, especially when we hear the Gorarti song, his name is being chanted there in service to Lord Chaitanya. Okay, I'll speak a little bit about another personality named Kala Krishna Das. And I think we're going to go through that quite quickly because that's very, well, not much material that is there. Kala Krishna Das is not the same Kala Krishna Das that um, went with Lord Chaitanya on his South Indian tour. That was another, another person who was a new person whose name was Kala Krishna Das, but this is a different one. And he was the best of the Vaishnavas. He knew nothing other than the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. He was part of the entourage of Janavi Devi. Let's see. Kala Krishna Das, in his, he was a cowherd friend of Lord Krishna. His name was Lavanga. He was one of the gold, 12 Gopals. I mentioned. He had two sons named Mohan Das and Goranga Das. Goranga Das was also called Vrindavan Das. So their descendants to this day still live in a village called Sonatala. And his, his disappearance day is today. So this is all we have on the life of Kala Krishna Das. So I was also asked to speak about Tamara's disappearance personality, which is Saranga Thakur. So I will also add that. And Saranga Thakur is, uh, was interesting personality. In Krishna Lila, there is, there is a personality known as Purnamasi. And Purnamasi is known as Yoga Maya. She is the supreme governor, supreme, even over, she conducts all the affairs in uh, Vrindavan. Even Krishna hears from her how things should go on. She tells Krishna, she makes all the, of course she knows Krishna's inner desires and therefore she speaks these things in the form of directing the events in, in Vrindavan. Uh, so her daughter is named Nandamuki. So Saranga Thakur was Nandamuki, the daughter of Yogamaya, Purnamasi, and Krishna Lila. Hmm. He also has another name called Sangha, Sangar, Sangadar, and Sangapani. He made a vow. He was a very strict devotee. He made a vow never to take any disciples. One day, Lord Chaitanya was walking and he saw Saranga Thakur and he said, Give up your determination to not accept disciples. Because Lord Chaitanya could see he was qualified to accept disciples. So he told him, give it up. So on the instructions of Lord Chaitanya, he gave it up. 
And he said, well, how do I do that? Then he said, the first person I meet tomorrow, I will accept as my disciple. <laughs> Interesting way we sang it. The first person I meet in the morning tomorrow, I will make a disciple. So as fate would have it, <laughs> he was bathing in the Ganga. And while he was bathing, a body, a corpse of a young boy uh, collided with him. In other words, washed up against him. He saw the corpse, he touched it, and the corpse came back to life. <laughs> this was, this corpse was known as Merari. He was a young boy who lived a distance away and he got bitten by a snake and he died. So his parents, rather than doing the crema crema cremation, they took his body and placed it in the river. So that same body washed against Morari and Morari touched it and the cook and he came back to life. And then he initiated that boy and that boy was very happy to receive not only his life back, but he also got initiation. He got two lives in the same day, how fortunate he was. We can see from this example that Obviously, to die from a snake bite at a young age is not a very welcome thing or a good thing. But in this case, it actually turned in to be a great benediction. Not only did he get his life back, but it was the cause of him meeting his spiritual master. Now his life was back and he became an initiated devotee. His name was, I think he gave him the name Morari. Um, let's see. Uh, doesn't say what name he gave him but it's interesting because later on these parents of the same boy who died later they met their son again and they said oh you're you're alive yes by the grace of my spiritual master he brought me back to life so they said well now come home they said that now my life belongs to my spiritual master. He is my real father. He has not only given me life, but he's given me eternal life. So my life belongs to him. So the living entity says, sometimes it says we take three births. We take births from our mother and father. Our second birth is our initiation into spiritual life and the third birth is to again to go back home back to Godhead so that second birth is the real birth of course we are extremely indebted to our parents and we show our indebtedness by serving them in different ways to, to make them comfortable to make them happy that is Vedic culture in Western culture, people don't have that kind of family understanding because they don't have the, the principles of how one should be grateful towards others. In this age, no one is grateful for anything anyone does to each other. And if it is, it's just some perfunctory uh, expression. But gratefulness is shown by service. So therefore, those... We are grateful to our parents by serving them in any way we can, because it was in this body or this life that we have that was given by this parents that we are now with who brought us to Krishna consciousness. Even if the parents are not up to the standard, still they are honorable, respectable, because they have given us uh, uh, this particular life. In this life, we have met our spiritual master. So that is 
how a devotee feels towards his parents. They are, and he's very grateful that they were the ones, because we've had so many life, lives, we've had thousands, millions of lives, but the parents who became our parents in this life are special because they brought us to Krishna. And now we can re go back to the spiritual world with our eternal father, Lord Sri Krishna. So, uh, yeah, so Marari was indicating that, that this is my real father. So Saranga Thakura was quite powerful. And I just like to divert a little bit of attention with something I was reading today in Srimad Bhagavatam. When uh, <clears throat> it's mentioned that um, there is a science in Ayurveda. The Ayurveda science is so powerful, the medical science, that there is a way to bring a dead body back to life through Ayurvedic treatment provided that body is still in its natural construction. I was just thinking, so many people are dying from this COVID uh, virus. If they would hire some Ayurvedic doctors, of course, there are not too many good ones left. Well, there are many good ones, but there are those who are expert. Um, they, they're, they're, they can actually bring a dead body back to life or they can take an old body and rejuvenate it and give that body the young energy that it used to have even though it's old. The body will change back to a young woman or a young man. This is the power of the Ayurvedic science. Not to divert too much, when I was in India, I was staying, I was speaking with one Ayurvedic doctor. Uh, we became quite good friends. And uh, I always consult him for, for uh, any kind of medical needs that I have. And he was telling me in, in detail, there is a principle in Ayurveda that they can change an old person into a very young man. And it's still, goes on today, a young man or a young lady, but the process takes nine months to do it. It's almost like entering into the womb again for nine months. I won't describe the details, but one has to go into like a seclusion for nine months into a very controlled environment where one doesn't see anybody or talk to anyone but gets uh, the nutrition they need given to them from the outside that is brought in. And that's the only person they see. They get this nutrition. It's a combination of milk with very special herbs prepared, given at a few times a day. And if you do that for nine months, you're old, useless, worn out, wrinkled, saggy body, and turn back into a young teenager again. <laughs> so I don't recommend you try that because, but this is the power of Ayurveda. It has, when people talk about medicine, we're talk, we were talking about uh, Narahari Sakur, who was a physician. And of course the physicians in those days were Ayurvedic physicians, they, they weren't this uh, modern day doctors who really don't know much about how to treat people. All they know is that uh, they can send you to a hospital and give you a diagnosis of all the symptoms you have, but they can't really cure, cure anything. All they can do is give you pills or sometimes give you an operation, uh, which may help to prolong your life for a little while, but they can't uproot the diseases through these processes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, modern day medicine is just a failure, mostly. Yeah. <clears throat> but of course, uh, I was talking to this, uh, my friend, the Ayurvedic doctor, 
I met his guru, who was a great, powerful Ayurvedic doctor from Kerala. And he was telling me they're working on a process of trying to uh, bring Ayurvedic medicine into a more prominent place in the world simply by changing the names of the different activities they perform and using more easy to understand secular names and teaching the science of Ayurvedic in a way that you can transform people through the Ayurvedic treatment, but it looks like something modern. In other words, to make it acceptable because modern medicine doesn't accept my Ayurveda mostly. Well, there's only a few doctors individually like that. So anyway, I'm sorry if I got off on a, a tangent, but I was just thinking since today we are suffering from so much health problems. So there are, there are cures for everything. There's even cures for death. <laughs> so that it's not like um, modern, modern medicine can't even cure a cold, what to speak of curing death anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm a little too critical, but I've had too many experiences in my earlier days with failed forms of medical treatment because people don't, doctors don't really know what they're, they have some idea and they can do something, but they can't uproot the cause of any diseases. All they can do is deal with the symptoms. And there's where Ayurveda is superior. Ayurveda can uproot the cause. The reason why mo most people don't take the Ayurveda nowadays is because Ayurveda treatment is long-term. It's long-term, but it's completely effective. Whereas the allopathic treatment is, they give you some pills, they give you some diet. In other words, they can relieve the symptoms quite fast, but they can't uproot the cause of the disease. That's why sometimes after some time, it'll return or it will lay in a dormant state and again, come back in some form or another. The only thing good about allopathic medicine is that they are good for operations. A lot of times their operations are quite successful, but uh, they're good for surgery. But outside of that, <clears throat> Ayurveda is superior in all respect. Okay, so anyway, here's a little bit about Sri Kala Krishna Das, Saranga Thakur, and Narahari Sakar. So we'll open it up to discussions and questions. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Maharaj, for enlightening us about the great Acharyas. So many beautiful stories, and we learn so much. and. Uh, the last uh, portion was so beautiful. It was very exciting to know that there is a cure of everything. Even we can have life or the youth age. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, so now I will request devotees. If they have any questions for Maharaj, they can ask now. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, thank you so much for a very beautiful session on all three personalities. Uh, so Maharaj, you were talking about how, uh, what is it, Sarang, Saranga Thakur, how he uh, initiated the first person that he saw. Yeah. So uh, can you please uh, explain as, uh, as, a, as a Guru Maharaj, uh, what are the qualifications that actually you look for in a, in a person that you're initiating? Hmm. Well, some of these qualifications are standard. <laughs> One is they have to be following the process. It's not that the process begins after initiation. Aspiring for initiation means uh, following the process as it is. Um, but what we look for is commitment, one who is steady 
and their practice. That is the most important thing. A lot of times people are not steady, although they are aspiring for initiation. But um, this steadiness is the foundation for successful practice of Krishna consciousness. Um, that is one of the things that we look for. How, how much, how steady they're practicing and how enthusiastic they are to take to the process. Uh, their, uh, their example in devotional service. And sometimes we uh, see that a certain person may not be uh, a person who will do good with coming to oneself. So we might say, well, actually, I think you might be uh, better off finding another spiritual master because I can see it, it won't work. <laughs> so that's a rare thing, but it does happen. And I know some spiritual masters are very keen to see the character of the person and note that some characters don't fit and they will not be able to, to guide them because of this uh, diversity in character. So that's, that's a side thing, but the thing is how committed they are and how steady in that commitment is. That's the main thing, how steady they are in their commitment. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Well, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Thank you for this beautiful lecture on these three great associates of the Lord. It's very inspiring to hear about them. Uh, my question is about uh, Purnamasi, who is Yoga Maya. She is the supreme governor in Vrindavan. Does that mean that she um, takes precedence over Vrinda Devi also and directing indirectly the pastimes? Vrinda Devi is her assistant. Okay. Thank you so much for clarifying that. He assists, assists Purnamasi and is also directed and guided by Purnamasi. <laughs> You can read that in the pastimes of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you so much for clarifying that, Guru Maharaj. I had a doubt. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Koti Koti Denbar Pranam, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev Kiji. Very, very inspiring class. Every Friday you are inspiring us. Srila Prabhupada, Srila Gurudev Kiji, Koti Koti Denbar Pranam Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you Maharaj. Thank you so much for being here. Shamaburi? Yes. Thank you, Maharaj, for the beautiful class. 
Yeah, Narahari Sakhar is quite a personality. He's very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya. Hare Krishna, thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you for the wonderful class, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. If no one has any questions now, so we can end here. Hey. Okay, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very, very wonderful class. Thank you for your association. Thank you. Thank you for all being here. I'm happy to have your association and the opportunity to speak about these personalities. Okay, thank you everyone. So we can offer obeisances. Vancham Kaltar Vishya Kripa Sindhu Evasha Patita Nam Padnebhyo Vaishya Vendikijayashrila Anand Koti Vaishya Vendikijayashrila Prabhupada Vendikijayashrila His Holiness Santa Mali Swami Maharaj Thank you so much Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you Maharaj. 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 Thank you Maharaj.